where we drink, smoke, and bullshit about the life of a historic criminal. Now we're talking outlaws and gangsters. We're not going to cover too many serial killers. That's just a little bit dark for me, and this ain't no true crime podcast. But honestly, you can't call this a history podcast, because I'm no historian. I'm just a history fan that does some research and bullshits about it with his friends. So speaking of my friends, let me introduce you to my co-host. So first with us today, I got DC. What up, do? And also with us, we got Cancer. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and on the fourth mic, we got Dan. Hola, mi capitano. <laughs> yes. What's happening, Captain? <laughs> In Mongolian. <laughs> Clearly. This is a bilingual podcast. <laughs> DC, you want to go ahead and kick us off with your drink today? Yeah, so I went with something super light. I was like tired, long day today. So I went into the beer store and I said, to myself, of course, what's the lightest <laughs> thing I can find that's like not piss beer? Or air. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I didn't want to go non-alcoholic, which I've had on this this mm-hmm. podcast before. I've had the uh, Heineken, whatever they call it, non-alcoholic. Ooh. No, it was actually good. Was it good? Yeah, it oh, was good. wow. Okay. But so I got this Goose Island. It's called So Low. It's only like 3% alcohol. They got Super calories light. on here, but I'm not drinking it for low <laughs> calories. <so. laughs> I'm guessing it's supposed to be like their version of a light beer, but um, it's pretty light. It's crisp, and having been tired already, I actually have a slight buzz off of 3%, which is crazy because <laughs> normally I drink, you know, high gravity, but it works, and it's it's really light and crisp. Drinking that low gravity. <laughs> low gravity. <laughs> low. Uh, That's great. I mean, you can't really get lower than 3%. After yeah, that, you're just yeah. drinking O'Doul's. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Sucking on a nickel. <laughs> Dan, uh, what do you got? Well, let me paint a little picture for you. <laughs> <laughs> I pull up to the liquor store, as I usually do, to grab me something before coming out of the podcast. Get there, realize, don't got my fucking wallet. <sighs> so I'm fucking cashless in Seattle. But then I remembered, it's like we got booze in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember we just did our uh, bad guy brunch, which I had corned beef hash for the first time ever. Mm. Spoiler, it's fucking delicious. Yeah. But uh, for the event, I bought me some Founders Breakfast Stout because, yeah. you know, I'll be on my Founder shit. Yeah. So I found me one in the fridge. I left two or three here, but it's down to just the last one because <laughs> sort of house this is so uh <laughs> so it's breakfast stout uh quick rundown it's founders i think it's eight point something you know eight point three percent oh yeah and it's just you know by the name stout it's nice thick dark beer it's real chocolatey it says it's double chocolate but then in case uh it doesn't have enough chocolate they also threw coffee and oatmeal and it's not even breakfast time right now shh don't tell anyone <laughs> it's the uh it's the everything bagel of stouts. <laughs> uh, I throw that shit on everything. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> Cancer, what you got to drink? Well, today I brought the uh, Sweet Baby Java. It's espresso bean infused chocolate peanut butter porter from Duclaw. Oh, you trying to one up my fucking description words? Yeah, well, you know. I mean, like. All uh, right, yours got beans. It's cool. got a Bible that it describes what's in it. Uh, yeah, it's Baltimore, <laughs> Maryland. Good stuff. I'm not sure of that. It doesn't taste like it's very high. Yeah, it's only a 6.2. I see it's got the, the independent beer sticker or yes. whatever, the little thing. Yep. Tank was the one that originally, originally showed me that. And now it's like my uh, the cauliflower ear, but for beers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you notice it. You, <laughs> you know, so if you see a guy with cauliflower ear, you know, like... Does a lot Probably, of mat work. Yeah, you should leave this guy alone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know? you know you have to speak up when you speak to him. <laughs> But it's just a visual cue, you know? And then, a, like, the wrestling versions that uh, the All-American thing mm-hmm. they get on their, their yeah, back yeah. shoulder. But, yeah, so as a visual cue, anytime I see that now, I just know, bam. That's yeah, a, that's a beer I could go with. Yeah. Worst case scenario, <laughs> it's got that. I can go with it. I got a Shorts Brew, Tierra Masu Blonde. So you actually originally were the first one that it was on the Tommy Karate episode where you kind of was talking about the bean flicker. Yeah. And how... I used to always think if you had to mix coffee or, you know, chocolates or whatever, it was always the, the dark beers, the stouts or porters. Right. And you were the first one that's kind of like, well, yeah, that. Or and blondes, you go the yeah. other complete opposite, mm-hmm. which is blondes. Yeah. And uh, I've just been a real fan of that lately. Like the blondes that are mixed with the, you know, different coffees or 
It's a great combination. Flavors and stuff. Blondes are really versatile. See, I was going to move as soon as you... <laughs> Physically s- and in beer <laughs> form. <laughs> you know, they just have more fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, as soon as you said tiramisu blonde, I was going to ask about that because I myself do like the dark chocolatey beers, and I don't think I've had a blonde one with like chocolate notes and shit. You should definitely try it. Uh, Bean Flicker's one to try, and that one as well. Support for Say Hello to the Bad Guy podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, and Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. So join over 4 million worldwide who trust Manscaped. With the exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code BADGUY. Now, it's actually 4 million and 4, if you yeah. count us. Um, or 8 million and 8, if you're counting <laughs> balls. <laughs> You gotta think of some of those people that only have one, though. <laughs> what about people with extras? <laughs> Evens each other out. Compensate. Hey. So, sometimes, Total you leave that, balls. sometimes you leave that middle nut alone, you got a little mohawk. It's cool. So, yeah, we got the Performance Package 4.0. So, that comes with Crop Preserver. You get the Crop Reviver. Comes with a bag. The nose clipper. The underwear anti-chafing boxers. So, it's a great kit. But even if... You know, maybe you don't need all that. They just have smaller stuff. They got lip balm. They got shampoo. They got body wash. They have traditional shavers. Like if you just wanted a, you know, a single razor shaver. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code badguy at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code badguy. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And before we get started, I want to make sure I take the time to thank Sixfo Swaino for letting us use his music in the intro. I want to thank Cancer for letting us use your music. It's in the, the least mineral. I can do, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it was already recorded. Yeah, that email, that okay. email took me at least two seconds to send. So, Well, I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate your appreciation. Some motherfuckers don't take two seconds. Uh, um, we appreciate Cancer around here. <laughs> not many people not, do. Not many people can say I that. I mean, when it's the God, though. When you're right. God. Right. So you followed them both on Instagram. Six fo is F-O-E. And cancer's at Cancer the God. Uh, the E is a three. Follow us at Bad Guy Podcast on both Instagram and TikTok. And then Bad Guy Pod at Twitter. And then if you can't find any of them, you can just go to the you can go to the website, badguypodcast.com. You can get to the Manscaped link. You can get to the Instagrams. You can get to everything through there. We'll go ahead and get started. And the bad guy we're covering today is Harry Aylman. This ain't negotiation time. This is Scarface final scene. Fucking bazookas under each arm. Say hello to my little friend. It might be Almond. All right, so we got Harry Almond, aka the Hook. Harry Peralt Almond. Yeah. Harry Peralt Almond. Almond. Yeah, I don't know. It's spelled like Almond. Yeah, it is. Because his descendants made beer. Yeah. He is the Ale Man. Take that logger shit the fuck away from him. I hope he had a hook hand. That's, how we got the AKA. <laughs> That's all I keep thinking. If there's not a hook hand in this, I'm going to be severely Yeah, I'm going to be disappointed too. If he was just a fisherman or something, yeah, I'm not going to like that. He was born in Chicago, January 19th, 1939. He was the first of three sons. His mother was Italian and his father was a drug trafficker from Durango, Mexico. So he was Mexican? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. His he mother was, was Italian. His father was a dishwasher. <laughs> His mom has a very one note identity. His dad has a few. So they grew up in an Italian neighborhood where his uh, uncle was an up-and-coming member of the Chicago outfit. His father beat him daily. And his only relief was between the ages of 7 to 11 when his dad was in prison. <laughs> he said he remembered those were the only years he didn't get beat ah <laughs> salad years like all oh, those great four years when dad was in prison it was so cool man. <laughs> i could sit down <laughs> he graduated from crane technical high school where he was in the physics club he was starting running back on the football team i didn't expect any of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. god damn and uh he also was a talented boxer for the ymca Nice. Oh, don't let the smooth taste fool you. <laughs> <laughs> He'll knock your ass out. So his specialty was lead hand hook, which earned him the nickname the hook. 
Uh, uh, okay. So that's where Rory Jones got it from, huh? <laughs> so that's the real reason you guys are here, because I know you guys are both boxing nerds. Yeah. So if anybody, <laughs> if anybody can appreciate a bad guy with a lead hand hook, there we go. Y- you guys can. I just don't want to waste that on somebody that just, just goes right over their head. Right. right yeah. I, on the other hand, was just here for a hook hand, so I'll see myself out. <laughs> Somebody go out and catch him. He's out in the parking lot already. Uh, so it was cool being here. I'm just going to daydream about pirates. I'll be over here if you need me. Yeah, so he graduates. Uh, he enrolled in the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts where he... Uh, let me yeah, I really have no idea where this is going. <laughs> this is great. Well, I was going to make the joke of if you grow up in the only times that you love life is when your father went to jail you would immediately want to be the sort of person that puts people in jail yeah yeah so i i thought he was going to go straight lace but not extra fucking fine arts fucking style yeah and especially because generally you have the theater crowd then you have the football crowd yeah rarely do they merge well, and honestly, even the physics crowd is kind of three yeah. different crowds, yeah. right? You yeah, got that the was the first ones, the, smart the first ones. left hook that you threw. That was that was <laughs> that was actually me in high school. I was played football. I was in drama, and I was in academic games and shit like that. You had all the girls then. Huh? Yeah. Save some pussy for the rest of us, bro. <laughs> I just looking for more pool. The more pools you can pull from. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, social butterfly. That was when smart. you have a lot of interest, you know, weird kid, a lot of interest, you know. Yeah. But diversify like your you're, bonds. You're, you're, you're kind of cool too, like just a little <laughs> bit. He graduated from the Chicago Academy of Arts with a two-year degree in commercial art. After graduation, he got a job at the South Water Street Market, where he would sell produce. And sometimes he'd sell some of his paintings. Sounds about right. Go to school for art <laughs> and sell <Yeah>. fucking fruit. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Harry, you're always sitting around just painting pictures of the fruit. You're supposed to be selling them. What are you doing? Like, yeah, that guy over there in the produce section, the one by the uh, the cabbages and shit. Yeah, yeah, he went to Juilliard. <laughs> 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 He'll do a fucking pirouette when he hands you a fruit. Yeah. He's a renaissance man. He, fucking, yeah. he runs a 4340. <laughs> and he's got an art degree. <laughs> and he sells fruit at a fucking local market. He's in aisle seven. So eventually, he wasn't making much money there. And I don't oh, know. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> what? Not a lot of money in Washington Apples this year. So he, st- he started selling horse race track sheets. Oh, yeah, there's more money in that for sure. And the turn. <laughs> that was very abrupt. I'm not making a lot of money selling tangerines. <laughs> this horse horse race. Becoming, <laughs> becoming an art major and slaying a lettuce wasn't making the cabbage. He sell some horse race tickets. There you go. That's the way. So as he excelled at most things in his life, when he got into the horse race slip selling business, <laughs> fell into that lifestyle pretty hard. And, you know, he's from Taylor Street in the Italian neighborhood he grew up, was like the central hub of the Italian neighborhood of Chicago. Okay. So, you know, once he kind of went into that lifestyle, he was just surrounded by, you know, his uncle was a connected guy. He just had all these guys all over, and he just slid right into this kind of criminal lifestyle real quick. And I'm sorry, about what year? Uh, 60s. Got it. Okay. So, yeah, he was born in 39. Okay. So we're going to move up to 1962, so he's going to be 23 years old. Nice. So he already had, you know, his hustle, so it was a good fit to slide right over into the mob. So in 1962, while drinking at a bar, they get into a fight, and Ailman pushes a lady through a large window. That's not so who that's, you're supposed to be throwing in a, in a fight. That, that doesn't sound like... <laughs> Throw a guy through a window. Right, that doesn't sound like a fight. It sounds like a domestic violence yeah. situation. Yeah. I mean, he got into a fight, and the lady went through the window. Well, no, so. he said it, it wasn't a lady through a large window. It was a large lady through a window. <laughs> so was it was an an ass- even fight. Was it an assisted suicide? <laughs> Well, he said he wanted to paint her. She said, <laughs> no. And he said, yeah, threw her out the window. What was the noise again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a physics experiment is what it was. Yeeted her out a window. The 23-year-old son of a Chicago police commander chased him out of the bar and flagged down a police car. And then he points out Harry. So the police stop him and interview him. And this, uh, the police commander's son shows up like, yep, that's him. That's the guy that did it. And the police start questioning him. And uh, Elman gets furious. And uh, he cracks the dude with a hook and breaks his jaw. Oh, nice. <laughs> the, Tell cop? You the cop? No, the, the, uh, the, the oh, the police one commander's was, son. The yeah. snitch? Yeah. 
the snitch. <laughs> Although, listen, if you see some a guy throw a woman out a window, by all means, Tell. snitch away. <laughs> like, you not, see something, well, say something. I didn't mean to put a negative connotation on this particular bout of snitching. Well, also, how do you snitch on someone and you're within arm's length of them? <laughs> How are you standing close enough to this gentleman to get punched? Tell you right now, right or wrong, which, like you said, threw a chick out the window. Yeah. <laughs> tisk tisk. All right. Eggs on your face. But, like, if you get snitched on and the motherfucker is with arm's length of you, punch that dude. What are you, what are yeah, you that, doing in that's life? That's the he went that away. Right. You know what I'm saying? Especially, oh, he went that away. I'm already disappointed that you don't have a hook for a hand. <laughs> If you got your fucking nickname by punching people and you don't punch this dude, what the fuck are you doing, Harry? This guy needs to be punched, okay? Yeah. Well, he he is for sure a police commander's son. He's going to tell on the guy and stand there in front of him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, it was this guy right here. He did it the whole time. I saw him. You should put him in handcuffs and take him downtown. Lock him up. And you know what, Dad? You know what? You, you, you know what? You should lock him up. <laughs> It's exactly what he sounded like. Well, he must have been kind of a douche because uh, Harry only got sentenced to two years What'd probation. What'd you say to me? Dad, oh, yeah. Dad, he called me a douchebag. Dad, Dad, he called me do that slander and liable. He only got two years of probation? probation? Two years of probation. For throwing a woman through a window? And, and punching, punching the dude. Yeah. And punching the dude. In front of the oh, Yeah, you gotta, you gotta add punching a dude on top of it. Well, <laughs> see, they actually took time off because everybody wanted to watch that kid get punched. Yeah. So, like, you know what? Yeah, we yeah, were yeah. pissed about the lady, but, I mean, because yeah. he got this guy, he, coming. So. he got away with yeah. pushing the lady through the window. Oh, They're like, ah, shit. whatever. Yeah, even, they don't care Even the lady that. was on the ground half passed out. She saw, she was like, about fucking time somebody <laughs> punched that kid. Did he punch a cop? <laughs> <laughs> So in 1964, Aylman marries a widow named Ruth Belper Mustari. <laughs> it was the chick he pushed that's, out that's, the window. That's, yeah, her mom, her grandma. <laughs> yeah. I'll make it up to you. I do. So she might have been a little older than him, but she was she was a girl that her husband had been a connected guy, and then he got killed. She had some kids, and she was kind of a neighborhood girl that like everybody kind of dug her, like she was cute or whatever, but nobody wanted to mess with her because, you know, she... I don't she know. was connected? Yeah, or her husband was. I don't know what the deal was. How old was she around, you said? I don't have what, what her age was. She was a little bit older than him, <laughs> okay. but she not was, like way older. She, she was a cougar a, age. Yeah, she wasn't an old lady. Snow, so, she wasn't a snow leopard. She was right. a cougar. So he's 64. This is 1964, so he's 25. She's like 30s. Oh, that's, yeah. She's yeah. A little well, where I'm from, when you say like she's, you know kind of of the neighborhood yes it's, it's a little bit of a different meaning <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah i was thinking it too like, <laughs> she knows her way, way around mean? town she knows her way around girl. town um well so she's probably the opposite of that she's known around the neighborhood but she don't really you know guys kind of don't fuck with her now when she had first met harry it was in 1960 and she was having a problem with the ex-boyfriend and she met him and told him about it and then her ex-boyfriend was found beaten and stabbed to death in front of his house Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So he was putting in work for a while <laughs> to get that. And that was yeah. when he was still in, in, the, in <laughs> the, the, the Chicago Academy. Yeah, 1960. Arts. Maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's when he's like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm selling fruit. I just fucking got this art degree. I'm just going to fucking start killing I'm Run some horses and throw some chicks through windows. So he marries her. She had four children of her own. It would turn out that he could never have kids, but he was described as a kind and loving husband and stepfather. His uh, his daughter would write a book about him later. Like his kids love him. He was a great dad. He'd like because he didn't throw them through a window that, that we know of. Right, right. No, he actually he was good with his kids. He wouldn't put his hands on him. He was basically the opposite of his dad. He knew like his dad sucked, and no matter what, he wasn't going to do that. Ended the cycle. Yeah, well, I can, I can, I'll be all right with that. So, <laughs> no, you don't disagree with that? Yeah. You think you should have been beating the kids? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Sounds all right. I got, I'll allow it. it. It checks the smell test. Yeah. Despite being only 5'8", 145, he is known as a vicious guy that had no fear and wouldn't back down. 5'8", 145? Yeah. Yeah. That's See, a... Th- Thin gentleman. Yeah, that's a boxer build, though. Like a, yeah, that's, that's like a Floyd. If he's built, if he works out. He Floyd used to. spent a lot of his career mm-hmm. at 147. I mean, he's hooking people, stabbing people up. He's pretty athletic. Yeah. He's a running back and shit, so I mean, you usually <laughs> got to have a little pop. Probably a lean, lanky sort of guy. Mm-hmm. A little it's, scrappy. He always had money and dressed nice with flashy jewelry. Uh, he put together his own gang called the Taylor Street Crew. 
And he was described, I seen a quote that said, he oozed menace, which I thought was cool. That's a good quote. Yeah, that's a good quote. So his crew we put together, they start a crew of basically like robbers, but they're strong armed robbers breaking and entering, you know, home invasion, you name it, they'll do it. Uh, their home invasions, he would use shoelaces instead of like tie straps or anything. Cause if you ever got caught with them, it's not as hard to explain like having shoelaces. You know how tight I tie my <laughs> shoes officer. I go through like three laces. A but day. if they have blood on them and there's a bunch of them in a bag, it might bring some attention to Once you. Once again, you don't know how tight I tie my shoes. <laughs> yeah, true. But yeah, they do everything from cat burglar into a place and steal something to walk up in your house and kick in the door and tie up you and the family and Jesus. take shit too. So, you know, so it really just depends how quiet they want to be. <laughs> like, you feeling quiet? Nah, fuck it. Let's be so, loud. So you're better to just let them be sneaky because the other <laughs> option is tie you up and wave guns in your face and kick you and shit. Oh, like, I would love if they got such a reputation in the neighborhood. Everybody knew who they were. And at some point people would sit there on the couch and be like, Dad, someone just claimed through the way. Just ignore him. Just ignore <laughs> Act like you don't see him. I'm robbing here. If so you look clear. at him, they're going to shoot us. Just yeah. act like you don't see him. It'll all be <laughs> over soon. So his crew starts working for his uncle, Jay Fiorola. Joe Fiorola. Who's Easy now. for you to say. Now he's a made guy in the outfit. So, you know, if you're just going to be operating in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? You need to be connected somehow. So he gets his gang together and he reaches out to his uncle and he's a made guy now. So his uncle starts setting him up with scores and hits and stuff that he has. And he'd work on a They'd work on a flat rate. So he'd be like your crew, you get $500 a piece, whatever the score is. So sometimes it'd be good. Cause they get there and there'd be like nothing. Or there'd be like a couple hundred bucks Got it. and everybody still get 500. But sometimes you go and it's $50,000. Everybody Everybody's five, 500. 500. <laughs> so at first they were just cold calling houses. Now he has leads through the sixties. He would get arrested for malicious mischief, illegal gambling, possession of burglary tools, assault, aggravated assault, grand theft, auto armed ro- robbery and aggravated kidnapping. And two counts of oozing menace. <laughs> so now with the burglary tools, right? If I was, and I'm not saying I would ever do this, but just for <laughs> sake of argument, hypothetically, <laughs> <clears throat> if I was into like breaking and entering and stuff like that, I would also become a locksmith. So now when I get caught <laughs> with these tools and they like, why do you have these tools? Like I'm a, I'm a locksmith, right? Yeah. But it's as easy as making a business card. Yeah, it's, but you know everybody <laughs> moonlights on the side, right? So like it's like you have your police officer that also like. Works in the club and beat up people and throw them out when they're drunk, right? <laughs> you know? But during the day, you know, he's just Great driving. Great side hustle. Exactly. Yeah. Side hustles, you know? It's yeah. like, yeah, you know, I'm a locksmith and, you know, I do a little something on the side. The world's most built inside hustle. A cop bouncer. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, yeah. So when you're looking to hire, like, well, I'm a cop, so I can just punch them and shit. Like, I will choke them and punch them or whatever. No and the repercussions. People, and then when the people show up, I'll just be like, hey, what up, boys? You know? I'm a cop. I like I like cancer's idea. Get caught with a thing with a thing of lockpick tools and a bag of shoelaces. But I have a business card. Hold on. <laughs> it works. Card. It works. Especially in the yeah. '60s. Come yeah. on, if you had a business card, that's yeah. legitimate. Yeah. Oh, right it's away. just like when I learned that I could make a press pass, laminate it at Kinko's, and then mm-hmm. go into a co- go where a concert was, and they just wave me through. I'm like holy shit, it actually works. Now, luckily, he had his uncle's connections, and C- Chicago was super corrupt at the time. So I just read you off all those arrests. You know, thankfully of, they fixed all that. Yeah, none of those were misdemeanors. <laughs> that was all bad shit. One of yeah. them is aggravated kidnapping. Yeah, and, shit. and they're mm-hmm. all kind of like. Ah, Good thing Chicago's not corrupted anymore. You know, but... it's cool. Yeah, whatevs. No biggie. Just... <laughs> so by the early seventies, his uncle Joe is now big time. He's like underboss. You know what I mean? He's like cruising up. This whole time, Harry's kind of under him. He can't get made because his dad's Mexican. Right. But he's kind of the neighborhood guy. He's raised like an Italian. You know, he's mm-hmm. Mexican. But like at one point, his wife will talk about she, he taught her how to cook mm-hmm. Italian food and stuff. Hmm. You got to figure if his dad was a dick and he's raised by his mom, she's Italian. Yeah. And yeah. if the best years of his life are the the years Where that his dad dad's was gone, locked up, yeah, he's gonna grab away, <clears throat> gravitate away from. He's not know, gonna what? really want to deep dive into that culture. Yeah. <clears throat> he's gonna go for the other. But he's still right there as his uncle's coming up, you know, and he's big time. He'll actually hmm. end up at one point, he ends up acting boss. Wow. So he's just cruising right up through the ranks and Harry's just right under him the whole time. His AKA is big time Joe. Cause he <laughs> hits the big time. 
So he, he's he got Harry under his wing by now. And what he tells Harry is he's like, look, you still keep your gang. And that's kind of your thing. You do that on the side. And Harry starts doing his flat rate thing with his gang now. But his uncle says, look, I want to bring the Chicago mob back to what it used to be like in the Capone days and the Accardo days. You know, now everybody's doing their own thing. So what I need is I need somebody that's going to force these independent bookmakers. And now all of a sudden everybody wants their own do their own thing mm. and not be like, I'm mm-hmm. going to kick up. And I think that I want to end that. And I think you're the guy to do it. Uh-huh. And Harry's like, fuck yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> so Harry went to work for his uncle, forcing independent bookmakers to pay a street tax to the outfit. He eventually becomes such a feared enforcer. Other criminals begin using his name to collect debts. <laughs> his name? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. really? <clears throat> That's that's some shit do you know who i'm working with hey you owe me five bucks fuck you Eh, it's for harry Mm -hmm. oh shit oh yeah yeah. oh yeah he just became a recruiter that doesn't take no for an answer (laughs) he's like hey you want to join no do you want to (laughs) join you know earlier i said he was like a real good dad he would always come home for dinner with his family and uh his daughter that wrote a book about him like one of the stories she tells she said look he was always a great dad to me. I loved him. He said, I did see some stuff that I probably shouldn't have had to grow up around. Mm-hmm. So he never liked anybody answering the door except him. So they were sitting at the house eating dinner and somebody started knocking at the door. And you're like, nobody move. I'll get it. Man, we've seen this in movies before. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've, we've seen this before. So he's like, just wait here. And he goes to the door and she just hears a bunch of noise and a scuffle and shit. Comes back in. He's got blood all over his shirt and shit. And he sits back down to start eating. And she's like, what happened? And he said, Jehovah's don't. Witness. <laughs> he says, don't worry about it. I mean, did he at least <laughs> wash his hands? Like, you know. No, he pretty much just <laughs> looked oh, back at the table. People didn't wash their hands back then. <laughs> did you Not wash even your hands? after a beating. Don't worry about they it. They didn't <laughs> shave their balls either. Sponsored by Manscaped. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've seen that before. That's that's one of those things that they'll put in like uh they'll put in movies. Like somebody knocking on the door. Yeah. Dag it <laughs> comes back. It's got I'll a be shirt right back. full of blood. <laughs> yeah. We've seen this story a thousand times. <laughs> Gets up from the table, returns, has some intestines around his neck, wearing it like a tie. <laughs> We've all been there. Pass the meatloaf. <laughs> Eventually it gets so good at just working as an enforcer. They're like, well, you should just take the next step up. How would you like some contract hits? Oh, well, Harry doesn't do anything half ass. So, so he gets together with, uh, <laughs> otherwise his nickname would have been half ass <laughs> Harry. <laughs> <laughs> half ass Harry the hook. We really like alliteration around here. <laughs> so he gets together with one of his partners, a guy named Butch Precicelli, and he decides we should start doing hits for the uh the mob and he really liked the lifestyle he liked spending money taking care of his family he he dressed nice his wife was a typical mob wife they described her as a lot she, of animal print <laughs> <laughs> she always <laughs> lots of hairspray she always insisted for his whole her whole life she always insisted they were poor and that he was a commercial artist so she always mm. said we don't got no money he's a commercial artist meanwhile she had like <laughs> seven inch nails <laughs> <laughs> One time he got arrested and she showed up to bail him out. And she showed up with a, um, a suitcase with $350,000 in it. And they were like, no, it's only 35000 And she was like, oh, my bad. Here you go. <laughs> That's not real. Don't worry about that. Nothing to see here. Bring me the smaller suitcase, Junior. <laughs> you imagine that? Like, oh, you said 350000 right? Like, no, we said 35000 <laughs> But we'll take oh. it. <laughs> we'll build another wing on the prison. See, this is why I always let Harry take care of the finances. I'm no good with the zeros. <laughs> so he was involved in way too many hits to list. Wow. Like, we can't, I mean, we you guys got stuff to do at some and point. This is, the, <laughs> this is the 70s now we're dealing with, right? Yeah, so we're, his first hit we're going to start off with is October 19th, 1971. So oh, so we are going 70s. to list them. So he's like the uh, he's like the Richard Kuklinski of uh, of Chicago. Chicago. Well, except his are real. Ooh. Ooh. Sick bird. Damn. But yeah, we're going to list some of them. What we're going to do is we're going to do the highlight reel. We've, we've done oh, this sweet. before. Yeah. You know, these big hit man... I say we don't cover serial killers. If I just read, and we still, we're still going to cover most of them, but he's, I mean, they consider he's probably responsible for anywhere from 12 to 18 hits or some shit. I'll so say 20. In the seventies, they weren't keeping too good a track of all the murders. Well, one and of the they thing, didn't work collectively either. So there's like <laughs> a lot of, uh, 
things get lost in the shuffle. Right. So his first hits, October 9th, October 19th, 1971, is a guy named Samuel Sambo Cesario. I killed him just because of his name. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, Sammy, Sambo, Sama, 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 you're fucking dead. Just kill him. So what he had actually did, there was this big time Chicago hit man named Felix Phil. And he'd been a Chicago. Like, Felix Phil? How are no, all no, these no, no, no. fucking comic book characters? I'm sorry. <laughs> it was Milwaukee Phil. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a big difference. Well, I mean, that, I mean, we were going alliteration overload yeah, for yeah, a yeah. second. So, Mil- yeah. So Milwaukee yeah. Phil, and he was like a legend in Chicago for like decades, you know. But now he's an old man, and he goes to prison. Okay. So now he's like sixties or seventies, and he's locked up in prison. And this guy starts dating his old lady, not even his old lady, like his side piece. Mm. And uh, and this guy doesn't like that, and he ends up marrying her, and he's kind of like fuck off. So the mob's like, well, we're going to take him out first. <laughs> no, so, you are the one that will be doing the fucking off. <laughs> so they give this to Harry as his first hit. On October 19th, when him and his wife were sitting in their lawn chairs on the front lawn, two guys in ski masks showed up. Wearing black socks. The first guy beat him with a, it was a 30 caliber carbine, which would be like Harry's go-to rifle. So he showed up and beat the shit out of So the guy's just sitting his, with his wife on his lawn chair, and he shows up, and the first dude... <laughs> Harry beats the shit out of him with the rifle, and then they shoot him in the chest and leave him dead in his front lawn in front of his wife. Oh, they left her alone? Yeah. Those fuckers came out of nowhere. (laughs) The second hit that they know of that he did was on September 27th, 1972. There was a guy named William Logan who was a Teamsters official. He was shot to death with a shotgun in front of his home. Eventually, he ends up getting caught for this one, like way down the line. Not right now, because two witnesses seen him do it in 1972. But as of now, he gets away with it. Mm-hmm. But at first, they assumed for a long time that it was a mob hit because it was a Teamsters official. Right. Well, it turned out it was his cousin's ex-husband, and she used he used to beat her, ah. and then they got divorced, and then he used to still show up and fight with her and shit. And then she starts dating Harry's buddy, Butch Precicelli, who's his partner in crime. So one day he comes over and starts beating her ass. And she says, she said, you better watch it. And I'm going to call Harry and Butch. Ooh. No, she I'm said, bringing back the studio audience. <laughs> she said, she said, you better be careful because Harry won't be happy about it. And, I would uh, think Butch wouldn't be happy about it. Harry doesn't mind throwing women through windows. Yeah. <laughs> well, but Harry's the name that, you know, everybody drops when they uh, want true, someone to yeah. back off. They drop Harry's name. <laughs> Harry's the name you can trust. <laughs> Harry the Hook. Come to him for all of your enforcement needs. I like the combination of the names. That's like another podcast name. Right? Harry and Butch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harry and Butch. So, yeah. So she, he's, she says, <laughs> you better be careful because Harry won't be happy about it. And William Logan told her, fuck that guinea. So she was like, all right, well, I'll tell him what you said then. I guess if that's, if that's well, what we're going with. I'll, I'll right. spread if, the if, message. If that's what we're going with, I guess that's what we're going with. So she tells him. I'll forward the DM. And uh, Harry shows up and. He wasn't happy about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. He he killed him with a shotgun in front of his home. Yeah, story checks out. It's we All of his hits so far aren't even mob related. Like this one, Teamster, you think mob related. It's all love triangle shit. Like yeah, he's doing yeah. soap opera killings, not mafia hits. <laughs> yeah. Because even the first one that was for the mob was for the mob for some. But there's real strict rules about each other's family. Like okay. your girls, they're they're off, off limits. My right. wife. And then the sisters, the sisters and uh, daughters and stuff like that. Got that's it. still you can you would have to marry them you know what i mean like if you have good intentions then you could date them but you can't it's a weird you know male you can't society side piece them up right no you could still do that you can't make them your side piece you can have a side piece if you marry them uh, Duh. Yeah, that's what I meant. there's <laughs> also that's also one of the rules that the mob have a lot of where it's just like yeah that's a rule on the books but so many of them are fucking with each other shit yeah. oh, so yeah. much. it's just it's, it's all so of those rules are broken yeah, if you get pissed enough then they'll put a hit out like on you it. hear them talking about they're like no junk no junk but then yeah. you're like behind everybody's yeah. back we were dealing in something well, well, well most shit, of the junk was coming from yeah. italy for yeah, the longest yeah, fucking yeah. time well, and they're talking about no junk like no that's yeah where it comes from yeah, yeah well they're all about loyalty and no chip but then like the guy will always rat out his boss to a different boss if it'll help him get ahead like they're all yeah do the same shit all right we're gonna take a quick smoke break refill our drinks and we'll be back in a minute Fake fathers, disorder. 
for survival with rivals with throat punches. All right, we're back. So when we left off, Harry was a um, basically a full-fledged hitman. And he decided just to go deeper in that gang. He's got his crew that's bringing his steady money in. He just becomes a go-to enforcer for the outfit. Now, in 1972, he hears about the murder of Crazy Joe Gallo in New York. Ah. Mm. So Crazy Joe Gallo, he gets killed in Umberto's Clam House. It's one of those famous mob hits. He was there like a birthday celebration. Four hitmen came in, unloaded their guns onto him, and killed him in front of the restaurant. So one of his mob friends, one of his co-gangsters eventually would tell the story that when they were hanging out and he read that story, he was like, that's how you do a hit right there. You do it in front of everybody. You prove a point. Mm. That's how a hit's supposed to be done. And that set the precedent? Yeah. So he decided, moving forward, That's how you this do is it. how we're doing hits. <laughs> there, there was a thing, like at some point people, they would said uh, they just wouldn't get in a car with Harry in the backseat. Like if a car would pull up and Harry's in the backseat, they'd be like, nah. And what's funny is even when Harry wasn't uh, in the back, but he called shotgun, they still weren't happy. <laughs> they still weren't excited. Like, that's worse. <laughs> In December 20th, 1973, a guy named Richard Kane, who was a top aide to Sam Momo Giancana. Dick Kane, you mean? Yeah, Dick Kane. <laughs> Dick Kane and Momo Giancana. <laughs> Dick and Momo! Coming oh, this season. The, from remember that UPN. crossover event where they met Harry and Bush? <laughs> On the CW. Yeah. Dick. <laughs> so, it was the multiverse. <laughs> so Richard Kane got set up. He showed up by himself thinking he was going to be meeting another guy there. What it turned out was he was actually planning with um, Sam Giancana on this big takeover to take out a bunch of the leaders and put Sam Giancana back in top. But the outfit got word of it. So they called in Harry. So this guy thought he was going back to this restaurant to meet up with his boy. And when he gets there, nobody's there. But then Harry and Butch Ah. come in. 
And they stood him up and put him up against a wall. And they told him to turn around and he wouldn't. So they <laughs> shot him in the head with a shotgun. They told the employees that if they said anything, they're going to come back and kill them. So they shot him with a they shot him with a double barrel shotgun and it went in under his chin. So it went in and it blew off the whole right side of his head. Ooh, wow. Oh yeah, that's, so that's, had, like, that's how you do it when you do it. That's how shotguns like that. work. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that the shotgun did yeah. what it was supposed to do. Yeah. That's he what sure, happens when you don't turn around. He sure got shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what Harry says. <laughs> And that's how you shotgun. I love how we had to tell all the employees, like, don't tell anyone or I'll kill you. Like the dishwasher's like, <laughs> yeah, I was no fucking shit. Yeah, man. Like, I was just about to go run and tell yeah, somebody. So you're thinking, what, I'm going to rat you out and then be within arm's length of you? Who think, does that? On June 19th, 1975, a guy named Christopher Cardi was, uh, he was a former police officer turned loan shark. <laughs> Did even the cops have alliterative names now? Yeah. Even the, what was his name? Chris Cardi? Christopher Cardi, yeah. God damn. He was shot eight times in the back and once in the face by two masked men. <laughs> yeah, even the dog was like, in the face? What? what? That seems a little harsh. <laughs> you already got him eight times in the back. What'd you tell him to turn around for? Uh, That's like Harlem Nights. It was like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> See, I th- I'm seeing a precedent here. I think he likes closed caskets. He's just fucking all their faces up. <laughs> yeah. That sounds about He's right. Like, I know we shot him eight times, but if you don't shotgun him in the face, <laughs> shot him 12 count? times in the dick and once in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, they did this in front of his family at Jim's beef stand in Melrose Park. <laughs> so uh, on October 31st, 1975, it's a Halloween. Um, Thank Anthony- you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, don't oh. call anyone or I'll shoot you in the face. That's the year it started, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Mike Meyer story. There was a a bookmaker named Anthony Reitinger, and uh, he went and sat in a booth in Mama Luna's restaurant. Most people say, yeah, he looked real nervous. Like, he came in, and he seemed sketchy, and he was looking around. And he finally seemed confident, and he sat down in his booth. And then a Montego pulled up, and two guys with a uh, ski mask got out. People said they just walked in, like, real quiet and calm, walked up to him. <laughs> they shot him four times in the chest with a thirty caliber rifle. And then the other man put a shotgun to his head and shot it twice. They are really about shotguns to the fucking face. And, and it was summertime, but nobody yeah, was suspicious that two guys walked out with ski masks on. Yep. Yeah. It's very calm. They I had ski it. masks on. This is straight up like hunting. Like anyone that ever hunts, you know, you sit there and you wait and the animal like comes in. But they never really come in then you get a shot. Like always like circle around shit you wait for him to come like this guy was like an antsy little squirrel like coming up to the bird feeder and shit and i want to finally got comfortable and gah, got him so I, I wanted to show that it wasn't all restaurant related because i took like the highlights and shit and i thought it was kind of crazy that oh he... this wasn't a restaurant no that one was <laughs> oh <laughs> I was like, wait a minute i'm saying moving forward oh gotcha gotcha oh yeah we just, move just on to, from restaurants just to show they're not all restaurants i'm just giving the hits now he uh, kills them in boardrooms january 31st 1976 a guy named louis de Bar- de, Bar- uh. de bartolo yeah get the fuck out really yeah louis de bartolo there you go <laughs> a gambler he was a gambler owed a bunch of loans wasn't paying anybody out he got shot in the head and stabbed four times with a broken mop handle in the store that he worked at. <laughs> wow. Okay. Easy, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So was the mop handle first? <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm assuming they stabbed him up with the fucking yeah. mop handle and then just gave him the one it's in like, the face because working. that's what they do. You know? Yeah. It's the why facial. would you hope for either one? It's the money <laughs> shot. <laughs> I'm hoping they really tortured him before killing him. Mop that handle. Good, that's what I hope good for. call. You're probably right. Hey. Money shot. March 29th. Did he take it like a champ? <laughs> he died. <laughs> died at work. That was a terrible way to die. I just stayed home and shit. Come work half a shift and get stabbed in the throat four times. Yeah. With, with yeah, your yeah, own that, tool? Yeah, that yeah, that is kind of a bad day. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. That'd fuck up the rest of your week. I'll tell you that. <laughs> He never really could get away from restaurants, though. So on March 29th, 1979, there was a guy named uh, Charles Chuck Nicolota. Sometimes he's called Chucky the Typewriter. 
<laughs> All right, these names are really. Good I want to do a, I, I want to do an episode on Chucky the typewriter. <laughs> that sounds like a kids show. <laughs> He's an actual typewriter. Today we're talks. gonna write a book, kids. I teach you how to spell. So I already got the research done. It's ready to go. Uh, Boom. So we'll cover Chucky the typewriter. <laughs> My <It's> man. A... <laughs> but. He was a feared Chicago hitman. So we're going to run that episode in reverse because now you know how it ends. But <laughs> Chucky the Tup Writer is sitting in his car in front of the Golden Horns restaurant. And he gets shot three times in the back of the head. I don't say this very often, but you're impressing the fuck out of me right now. <laughs> How's that? Reversing the actual <laughs> killing of the Chucky the Typewriter. That's my storytelling I've been working on, man. I like it. Chucky um, the Typewriter. But eventually his second murder ever and like i said in this time i gave you just a few of them he's suspected up to 18 who knows how many people he really killed wow but that second murder the guy that called him a guinea his cousin his yeah. cousin's uh the teamster guy yeah mm-hmm. the witnesses by then they get in touch with these witnesses and the witnesses they identify harry without knowing it's harry oh okay so then once they look into it, they find out that it's his cousin and she was dating Butch. And then there was something on record for a conversation that they have. So they're like, OK, we know that they're talking. So it's probably Harry. So they charge him with the murder of William Logan. But now, you know, he's a big shot and he's one of the best enforcers. He's taking out people left and right. And his uncle's like the man. I don't know if he's the underboss yet or if he's the acting boss. But either way, mm-hmm. that's High still, he's a big you know, deal. that's the big guy. So they throw like all, and he, you know, and Harry's paid anyway. So they throw all their fucking uh, resources, and so they start calling it all these favors. So what they did was they they brought in a shady defense attorney who requested they had a hard judge, and they requested a different judge, and they had the shady attorney get a new judge, and they said, "What we need to do is we need to find somebody that we can buy off." So it's like good fellas, it's right. a good plan. So. Harry forgoes his right to trial by jury and he goes to like a default jury by the judge Mm -hmm. because they figure it's tough to buy off a whole jury, but if we could buy (laughs) off one judge, right. That's what we're going to do. It'd been cool if he did trial by combat. (laughs) So, (laughs) so check this out. This is kind of crazy. So they finally find a judge that's willing to play ball because he's got like all these kids in college and all these fucking, you know, bills. So he's like, you know what? And he only he did it for like ten thousand dollars, which doesn't seem like enough to let somebody off of a murder rap. But in the 70s, though. Yeah. And he tells them, he said, look, but you just got to give me something. So I'll find him not guilty, but you just got to throw something that I can put behind to say, like, hey, this is why. You know what I mean? You, you know, yeah. You know, the like law a lesser, is shady. Like a so lesser you, charge yeah. or? No, they just like any kind of good defense. You got to put something together oh, okay. that I can sink my teeth into where I could say, look, this is why I'm not guilty. Or I'm going to get fucking yeah. drunk. I'm going to get disbarred. <laughs> this goes back to the don't say anything or I'll shoot you. Like the judge is like, all right, well, you guys have to put up a defense. Like they were going to be like my opening statement. <laughs> Your Honor, are we good? <laughs> <laughs> like, of course they have to come up with some Rubs sort his of fingers money. together like the money yeah. symbol. Like, it's, winks sad at it has, it's sad it has to be said. And, like, but... We're just like, well, you guys are going to say something, right? <laughs> Judge, I'm going to slip you an envelope. In the envelope is our defense. <laughs> yeah. And $10,000. The judge that was willing to do it, it turned out to be the original judge. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Yeah. They wanted to get rid of. We didn't see the uh, price tag the first time we met. Now mm-hmm. we saw it. Now we're good. Now, the reason they were kind of willing to, the government's kind of willing to do it because they're like, well, he is a hard ass. So I don't see why they'd want to bring him in mm-hmm. as their judge. But you already requested a move to have, a to have him off. Yeah. So the defense attorney told Harry to fire him and hire a guy that he recommended who he ended up consulting anyways. So that way the new con- the new representative could Can say, request, request the yeah. judge be like, well, yeah, that's why we fired that guy. This judge is our guy. That's who we want. Oh, okay. So it was a whole roundabout shit to still get the same judge yeah. in the yeah. first place. And Harry's like, it'd be a lot easier if I could just shoot these people in the face. Yeah. Outside a of a restaurant. Well, the only reason I said all that is because I just wanted to point out that's a lot of political corruption. No, when no, they're makes, when they're just like like that's the whole sense, thing yeah. that they went through to do it. Yeah, yeah. the whole political tag me in. It's like <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to avoid somebody who you don't think you can you can uh, get over on, and then you can actually you could yeah. actually have gotten over on them. So yeah, 
is there a such thing as politics without corruption? Not like at that's all. like yeah, you know it. who just eats like a peanut butter sandwich, like nothing else on just peanut butter and two pieces of bread. Like no more malls in this city. No more malls in the city. Hey, you want to like Hey, so we're gonna open a new mall. It's gonna go right over there on top of the other mall. I mean, it's not gonna be a regular mall. It's gonna have like other stuff in it. Yeah, this is it. different. Like, I was saying no regular mall. It has an organic know, juice bar in it, so it's way different. Amusement park. Two rainforest cafes. <laughs> and a planet Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> So they put together a terrible defense, and uh, <laughs> he was barely able to. He could barely figure out how to let him off. He actually it wasn't him. In the closing statement, he ended up having to say some stuff like, "Look, I'm not saying that I think he did it, but what I'm saying is, in a court of law, this wasn't proved." But eventually, Harry ends up getting acquitted of the murder of Logan. You say he did it, but did he? Right. <laughs> well, that's reasonable doubt. Works for me. See, I want to see, like, we always go through the, if the movie was made of this guy's life. I just want, like, a one-episode sitcom of just this court procedural. Yeah. Where they just botch it up so much, and the judge is like, oh, if, did you object? Did you, you objected, you object, sustained, he objected, you guys saw it, like, nobody objected. Like, God damn it, you assholes. It's like a more serious My Cousin Vinny or something. Yeah. Like, my cousin Vinny, if the judge was trying to help Joe Pesci the whole time. <laughs> so, Harry's last murder was actually three days after the acquittal <laughs> of the Logan murder. <laughs> like, he went and celebrated <laughs> with a little murder <laughs> to I'm make back. sure I got off this one. I'm back. Jesus. Celebrate good. <laughs> Come on. Now, unfortunately, in 1978, one of his guys that's working in his theft ring that's out like robbing people and stuff gets busted and snitches. And then they have a bunch of physical evidence. But wait a minute. They have a code against that. <laughs> what? what? The mob, mobsters never snitch on each other. Yeah, it's not allowed. But that Harry's okay? gang, uh, Harry's gang ain't made guys. Oh. You know yes. what I mean? They're just these kind of street guys out street doing their soldiers. own thing. Yeah, because so mob they can guys snitch. never snitch. Yeah, they can snitch. <laughs> but... They also find some physical evidence, so they can't convict him on any of these robberies. But he's one of the early uses of the RICO Act, where they could prove that he was the boss of this gang and the gang was doing it. So by default, by the RICO Act, got it. He's guilt. He's guilty of running a criminal organization for a series of home invasions, and he was sentenced to thirty years. So he goes in to do his 30 years. He did time at Marion. He's around 40-something right at this time, right? 78, he'd be, yeah, probably about 43. Okay. I think. Well, yeah, No, you said he was born in 39. Oh, 39, right? yeah. So oh, that'll okay. Make him, that'll make him 39, right? What year is I think it? he just did around what? 78. Yeah, so, yeah, he was right. Yeah. So 39? Yeah, about 39. So he gets sentenced 30 years. He did time at Marion, Atlanta. Oxford and Milan, Michigan prisons. Damn, he did a whole tour. Well, in Oxford, he really liked it because they had like a painting program. So he actually got he got his <laughs> he got his college he got his college degree. Oxford like, is it, where though? Uh, Oxford, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, okay. Yeah, it's a federal prison there, and he got he finished he got a four year degree because he already had the two year degree. So he went in there, got in a college program, got his four year degree, started doing paintings and shit. And then in Milan, they had a good produce selling program. Yeah, so, and so he's just going full circle. <laughs> on April 28th, 1989, Weird. after serving 11 years in prison, he got released on parole. Now, while he was in prison, his uncle had died, and he left him 100 grand. And uh, Harry got out. He got his 100 grand from his uncle, and he pretty much just went and hung out with his wife and kids. You know what I mean? Hung out with his family. And he said it was the best few months of his life. <laughs> Okay, few months. Uh, yeah, I love how that already goes. This is the best few yeah. months of my life. I can't what remember being, last time I was this happy. My <laughs> father was in prison. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, all of his uncle's old crew, once he was dead, they started getting caught up on all the old extortion stuff that they had did back before he was even killing people. Mm. So back when they were just, uh, you know enforcers yeah back when they're just enforcers and they're getting all the other sports books to kick up man why's johnny law gotta be keep keep bringing up all this old shit you know what i mean 
And, well, that's what they did. They brought up old shit from, like, 72 and shit like that. They were bringing up old tweets and stuff. They were like, <laughs> it was a different they canceled time them. back then. They canceled them. And he ended up getting caught on the RICO charges again, and he got convicted of extortion and sentenced to 12 years. And how long were he was he out? You said months. So. Yeah, months. I mean, so he got sentenced in 91, but that was, they caught him, right. they arrest him, he did the trial, but he was only out for a little bit of time. Hmm. Uh, the whole Rico shit is so w- weird because they just busted so many mobsters. It's the same as like how they got El Capone for like tax evasion. Like this motherfucker like just shot people in the face with a shotgun. He's getting caught for like some burglary and some extortion. He yeah, did. Like, it is a little strange. It's w- I mean, they catch him. That's how they catch him. But it's like, damn, you guys got them on this shit when like, you know, they've just been shotgunning people to the face. Meanwhile, they can pin, like, you know, they can prove that you sold a fucking dime bag to somebody, like, and they'll send you to fucking prison, but you you blow somebody's face off with a shotgun, they're like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if it was him. <laughs> yeah. Can't really tell. So, we'll get him on tax evasion. Yeah. <laughs> fucking stupid. So, Harry kind of figures, he's like, well, I got sentenced to 12. I can do my time, maybe get out early again. He requested to get sent to Oxford. He's like, I want to get back to yeah, my I painting. I want to go painting, yeah. <laughs> I have an unfinished hummingbird <laughs> I'm fucking working on. But based on evidence that came up during the testimony, they discovered some corruption on the Logan trial. And eventually, one of his old, the old defense attorney, the original defense attorney, he steps forward because the FBI was doing this big investigation to all the Chicago political corruption. And he's like, hey... I got one for you. And it turned out the judge had already seen it coming and he shot mm-hmm. himself. He committed suicide and shit. Wow. Because he didn't want to go down as like a, a tainted judge that it took it took money and shit. So, so instead, we're still telling a story about the tainted <laughs> judge <laughs> that shot his head off. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> killed himself. <laughs> yeah. He... No, fuck that. We're talking about, if we talk about these bad guys, we're talking about yeah, this yeah, corrupt yeah. fucking judge. Yeah, exactly. So he doesn't want, it's not that he doesn't want that to be known. It's, he doesn't want to live with it. He doesn't want to have yeah, to yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. So, so the, the, the attorney is like, hey, I did some pretty crooked shit. <laughs> you want to hear about it? <laughs> Boy, do I have some tales for you. So his, they don't live by the same code. <laughs> right. So, well, Harry Elman, he puts together a defense team. He says, hey, double jeopardy. I beat that one. But the federal government's like, well, we got all the resources in the world. And they take it to the United States Court of Appeals where the Seventh Circuit gave it a Fifth, a fifth Amendment ruling. The ruling's now called Harry Ailman versus the judges of the criminal division in the Circuit, Court of, County, uh, Circuit Court of Cook County. It was uh, established 1998. So it's like a, a real like legal statute now. A legal precedent? <laughs> yeah. So what it says is it's not double jeopardy because the first trial was corrupt, so there was no real jeopardy at the time. So the statute actually says now. But he served real time, though, didn't he? No, not for that. He got oh, off that one. He, he got, got off that he one. On the right, Rico charges. Right. Three days later, he yeah, killed right. somebody and then got caught yeah. after that yeah. for a second murder. Yep, you're right. <laughs> so he's only got caught on all the fucking stupid Rico stuff and the robberies and extortion. He never got caught for any of the murders. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. But what, what the ruling says is if you choose to decline a jury and you are found proven to bribe the judge that doesn't count a mistrial doesn't count as double jeopardy okay so even if you tamper that kind of negates the whole proceedings right. okay. so even if you tamper with the the case and you have a jury it still counts but if you go to the judge only it doesn't count as double jeopardy for the same reason that it was easier to buy off one judge than it was to buy off an entire jury right because they're sense. like, well, your people didn't fuck you. The government did. We can. Yeah, you know, yeah. We will still get you on that. See, I told you, should have gone to trial by combat this whole time. <laughs> so in 1997, Allman was retried and convicted of the Logan murder and sentenced to 100 to 300 years in state prison. Oh, that's easy time, though. Yeah. <laughs> 300 so, years? So once again, he'll just do his time. They'll so he'll out. be out, like, what, in 200 and... 12 years 270 i don't do math well well it actually really pissed him off though because that was uh that was a <laughs> wait he wasn't happy about this <laughs> <laughs> well in in addition to the fact that now he's never getting out it was also a state crime so he couldn't go to the prisons he wanted he had to go to, like some shitty oh. state prison oh, and they have a horrible painting <laughs> program <laughs> they you think you the illinois fucking they only have County one co- they only have red like three shades of red that's it. That's all you get to paint with. <laughs> they're, they're like, Make a hummingbird out of that, you fuck. All right, you got to go 
100 to 300 years. All right. <laughs> but here's the list of prisons I want to go to. You don't get to pick. What? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Since when? <laughs> the fuck do you mean? I get to pick judges. I get to pick my lawyer, but I don't get to pick what prison I go to. Harry Elman died from complications of lung cancer on May 15, 2010 at the correctional at the Hill Correctional Center in Galesburg, Illinois. With a paintbrush in his hands. I love how they always wear that too, like complications of lung cancer. Like, no, it was lung cancer. It was just lung cancer, yeah. It wasn't like, what are the complications? No one says complications of COVID. They just yeah. say COVID, right? Yeah. It's not going to say complications of lung cancer. Yeah. yeah, his lungs didn't fucking work anymore because they were riddled with cancer. Cancer is the complication. Yes. Yeah. He, he died from complications of he getting gurgled. shot in the face. Yeah, he gurgled. <laughs> that was the complication of getting shot in the yeah. face. <laughs> so that's the story of Harry the Hook Ailman. So say goodnight to the bad guy. Go on. The last time you're going to see a bad guy like this again, let me tell you. Hmm. Real disappointed by the lack of hook hands in the story. And boxing. Much. He only hit somebody once, I think. Yeah, and it was yeah, a woman through a window. Hook, I don't think that's even... Like, that was his high school nickname. That shit don't count. <laughs> yeah, That's, that's like a... saying you play basketball because you played in high school. No, you never played for the <laughs> NBA. It's funny how all the, all the horrible shit he did in his life, and the one thing that I'm still stuck on is he threw a fucking woman through a window. <laughs> like, I mean, like, what a piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah, he, he killed me, but he fucking pulled the wall. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. But then he punched yeah. that uh, constable kid in the face, so it was a wash. <laughs> Equality. <No>. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Dad. He pushed that lady out the window. He's definitely a Defcon 1 all the time because he's throwing women out of windows. He's definitely a bad Yeah, I guy. think I made my judgment right there. <laughs> I think he's really good at piano. In, in, theory, throwing, in theory, throwing that lady out the window is the best. Like, that's the least bad thing he's probably ever did. So I just really hate this dude. So you guys haven't seen a picture, but if you were going to cast a movie about Harry the Hook Ailman, who would you cast to play him? Adam Driver. Adam Driver's good, but if we're going size-wise, he's a big dude. I kind of wanted a tiny little... Oh yeah, Adam Driver is a big dude. But I mean, his size never came into this story. Right. So... I don't know, he's one of those dudes where I'm I'm seeing this as a comedy, but he's also got to be violent, so I'm trying to think of, like... Some you just see co- everything as a comedy, because it wasn't a lot funny. Well, this was definitely... It, the story didn't really come with dick jokes. We, we brought jokes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I gotta tell you, th- th- there was a, a huge shortage of dick jokes that I, I just, you know... I'm still caught up on the lack of hook hand. What was yeah. that guy's name back in the day? He played on a few things, but he was on that TV show, Who's the Boss? Oh, Tony, Tony Danza? Danza? Tony Danza, that's who I would say. He looked, he looked like, listen, he looked like, like an a Mexican Italian. Italian. Yeah, exactly. A Mexican Italian boxer. Look. Man. Yeah. Hey, you know he's what? about 5'8. I can't be mad at yeah, it. He's about 5'8. He's a dude that we used to say a lot, and we've said him less and less now. But I would say John Barenthal, he would be good. Mm. Yeah. But see, I don't know if he could play a half Mexican, half he Italian could. dude. Yeah, he could. I see it. Do you know who right. John Barenthal is? Do you know Punisher? the Punisher? Never seen uh-huh. it. I mean, he's been but <laughs> Punisher. The walking the dead. Have you seen a commercial for it? Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yeah, I know you don't watch TV. Yeah. <laughs> what about Wolf of Wall Street? I saw the Wolf of Wall Street. What about Sicario? He's the one that Jonah Hill gets arrested, the the angry like drug dealer dude. Like, so he's in I Sicario? Think, okay, I remember. Uh, he's in Sicario. He's if, you see, if you've seen shit. him, probably, yeah. you'd know him. I he's in the Wolf of Wall Street, a thousand though. things. He plays pretty dark pretty well, too. Oh, he played fucking somebody's that in Saints of Newark. Oh, yeah, he played uh, Johnny Boy Soprano. Never seen yeah. it. That's right. <laughs> well, that's new. I knew you didn't see that. He plays, never seen anything. what's his name, and that one thing you never saw. Yeah, never seen it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like a weird shaggy. Like, have you seen him in this movie? I haven't seen it. Did you see him in the sitcom? I haven't seen it. <laughs> it might have even been on Showtime. <laughs> have you heard of Tony Dan's? Uh... <laughs> It turns out he was a boxer. <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> I don't even think that's a bad Shaggy song. I think that's <laughs> as good as a Shaggy that's song. That's a lot better than a fucking right. song. I don't know how good you think Shaggy is. But it's a lot better than that god-awful Ashton Kutcher and fucking uh, commercial where they try to sing that song. 
Never seen I haven't it. seen it. Good. <laughs> Consider yourselves <laughs> very <laughs> lucky. I have seen it. I was waiting for one of these guys. Yeah. 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 But I, I get the reference. Yeah, it's a horrible commercial. So here's some pictures of Harry the Hook Ailman. Oh, Adam Sandler. You know what? I really could see Adam Driver. Yeah, I can see Adam Driver too. Yeah, Adam I'm... Sandler and Adam Driver and Andy Samberg. Yeah. yeah All the Andy A's. Samberg. All the A's can play him. It it depends because I can see Adam Driver, but this picture like that almost looks like Adam Sandler. Like in that yeah, it looks like Adam Sandler to me. Well, explain if you see Adam Sandler in uh, Precious Gems or Uncut whatever, Gems. Uncut Gems. Yeah. Yeah. Like that is very him. So now we gotta do the Defcon scale. So yeah. stand- do we really have to do, <laughs> like do a Defcon scale on this one? <laughs> so okay, well, what do you guys? <laughs> Can I do a Defcon scale on his shirt that he's wearing in that first book picture? That fucking butterfly collar. And hey, that shirt is sweet. Yeah, he's definitely a hey, baby. What you sign? Yeah. Like, what you say? Some the chest hair. Or something? What you sign, yeah. baby? Got some ladies with that. Well, all these uh pictures wind up on the Instagram and shit. I think, but uh. When you see these, he has three very distinct looks here. Yeah, you're right. It's like the different stages of Scarface. Like, <laughs> at first, he's rocking the big lapel collar, yeah. like floral shirt. Then he's got on the leather jacket, yeah. laid back look. Then he's rocking the suit. I'm assuming Dude, he's going to court. And every time, he's rocking them. Yeah, 100%. Those are three very distinct looks. Those are If you had an action figure, yeah. those would be interchangeable. <laughs> are we, are we gonna bypass out. the fact that Dan said on the Instagram? Why? <laughs> why? What? Because if you would have said oh, on the said gram, that. it would have been okay. I say on, on the, the Instagram. I say, I say on the Facebook. I always do. So on the no gram would have worked, or on Instagram would have worked. <laughs> no, on, on the, the Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> You know, the, the thing that the kids are on nowadays. What Instagram. channel is the YouTube on? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys think? DEFCON scale. We're going, I'm going to um, go out on a limb here. I, I don't think I speak five, for everybody, right? but yeah. I was thinking definitely a five. I mean, I didn't see really anything bad. He seemed like a good guy to me. So, yeah, definitely a five. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, though, because I think I'm going to be throwing you guys a big curveball here. Are you guys saying he's definitely a one? <laughs> definitely a Cause one. Because yeah. I don't think so at all. Well, I think he's at least know, a two or three, two. He has bodies. I'm not saying he's low. We only, we only did a few of the bodies, <laughs> and he threw women See, out of windows. Once again, it doesn't matter. Body, it's his motivation. It seemed like all this shit. <laughs> No, for real. He wasn't an angry guy. Anyone that knew him said he was cool. It's He was a hitman. He was an enforcer first. Yeah, he was definitely was an angry job. guy. Hey, it Jeffrey was Dahmer job. was just looking for love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was an artist. One of my rules, no, for real, is it was never personal. He didn't do crazy vendettas. He wasn't out here doing He stuff. collected Everything a he... whole group of people and <laughs> wa- made them watch an execution. At your job. That's point. At the really work. Yeah, that's the place to work. Day. Like, you're like, going to watch. And then turn to him and said, if you say anything, I'm I'll not saying he was you. a good. I'm not saying he's a five, but that doesn't make him a one. I don't even have benefits. He wasn't out here just killing people. <laughs> Everything he did was business-wise. He wasn't an angry guy. He wasn't a... He was violent because he shot people in the face, but he wasn't, like, <laughs> out here brawling all the time. I mean, our, like, our litmus test is the purple gang. Everything they did was business. Yeah. No, they were angry too. <laughs> they were angry. All of them. They were. They were the fucking whole, everybody. Yeah. They were. All they, were they were. Fucking okay, everybody. so um, they were at least perturbed. So Dan's <laughs> going with a five for real. No, no, I'm going with like a two. With a two. Dan said he's a good because guy. of the amount of bodies and the way they did it. I I don't know how to explain it. it just. He didn't have that sort of crazy anger, violent, like he was just out here killing everyone that I think a one is. Like, everything he did, it seemed, I don't know how to, like, not buy the book or whatever, but it, it, it was all business, baby. Let me ask you this. Uh-huh. Where do you see him? Mm-hmm. And do does your knowledge of all the other shit that he did that you didn't have time to bring up, does that craft your opinion? So, I think I have him at a one, and I don't think... I don't think it does because I mean, I, the rest of it's about you know about eight more of those, and there's some <laughs> <laughs> there's some stabbings where they sometimes they leave them in the trunk or sometimes they leave them in the car or sometimes they stab them in the throat, sometimes they shoot them in the head. One man, you know? but I, well, what I think he is a hitman and he does kill a lot of people, but I think maybe he was a, a good family man outside of that. But some of these guys are. 
I think the difference is everything he always did was violent. Because even when he wasn't killing people, when he was doing robberies, guys do robberies and don't carry weapons or never hurt anybody or put mm-hmm. a lot of time into it. Right. Like he did everything violently his whole life. So even when they were doing robberies, they were tying people up and you know what I mean? Like uh, home invasions and stuff. So I think even though he was able to turn it off, I think everything he's always done has been violence. And I think that the extra stuff isn't what changes my opinions because I don't think it's more murders that does it because at some point, once you get past however many, now you're just rolling bodies. But I think it's the fact that he was consistently violent in every aspect of his crime, kind of. All right, flush the bombers, get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON 1. All right, this is Say Hello to the Bad Guy. Thanks for coming, and thanks for listening.